We're going to take a look at the details of the gamma ray on quantum effect experiment. We have two detectors. We have a LaCroix oscilloscope and we have a nuclear instrumentation bin, a NIM bin. We have a thin detector in front of a thick detector. The gamma ray source is surrounded by lead with a hole in it to collimate a beam of gamma rays to go through both detectors. The detectors are scintillators coupled to photomultiplier tubes and preamplifiers. There's a high voltage supply for the photomultiplier tubes. The, uh, the signals from the detector amplifiers go to these special delay line amplifiers that are pulse shaping amplifiers. This one and this one made by Ortec. The signal from the amplifier goes into SCA, single channel analyzer, which sets where you get to set the lower level and the upper level of the pulse heights that we are going to let through. There's a timing knob. We get to set the timing of square waves that come out of these instruments. The timing signals go into the channels uh, 3 and 4 of the oscilloscope for 3 and 4. And we get to see square waves that are coming out. The square waves go to counters and this counter. We're going to first examine how to set the upper level and lower level. We're going to place the source directly on channel 2 to adjust the single channel analyzer levels. So I'm going to lower the lower level clear sweeps this is the x-ray we do not want the x-ray this is the gamma ray so I'm going to raise the lower level and clear the sweeps clear the sweeps again so we've eliminated the x-ray I'm going to raise the upper level so we see what the rest of the spectrum is like. So now we see some of the larger pulses coming in. We don't want those pulses either. They don't hurt. But bending over backwards in favor of quantum mechanics, some of those are from outer space gamma rays, so we're going to just declare them invalid and eliminate them. So let's lower the upper level. Lower it some more. A little too low. That's about right. So we just want to see the photo peak 
the spectrum of the 88 keV gamma from Cadmi 109. We're triggering on the square wave coming out of the SCA. Now we're going to change the triggering and do the other channel. Well, let's move the source. I'm putting the source. Now putting the source in front of the thin detector. So we're going to go to setup of trigger, trigger on channel three this time, the first detector. And I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to show you that there's an x-ray there by lowering the lower level. bit too low. Clear the sweeps make it easier to see. Here's our x-ray which is really in the noise. I'm going to raise the lower level to get rid of it. That's a good place. And we could also explore the higher levels, see what happens if we open, raise the upper level and get some big pulses in. There'll be a few big pulses that'll start to show, which we do not need to count. Some of those pulses are going to be two for one from the unquantum effect. two detections that happen close together or two detections from the unquantum effect. I'm going to lower the upper level again. Here sweeps. Raise the lower level a little bit. Let's let that go a little bit. Give that a few seconds to build up a nice histogram. Pulse height is on the horizontal. Pulse height, pulse height. Triggering, triggering off the square wave from the single channel analyzer. Trigger, trigger on channel three. There's a three here. That's a good place. So this is how we set the uh, levels of pulse heights that are through the single channel analyzer, which is a filter of pulse heights. This is a very important step to be done properly and it is done properly. To start the experiment at this point we go to smart trigger 
and trace C is going to be picking up histogram change and delay between channels 3 and channel 4 delay between channels 3 and 4 the time difference the time difference between these two square waves is plotted on this histogram the number of pulse pairs versus time difference you could think of zero time in the middle. And that's the beginning of the experiment proper. And we're going to let that go for a while. I'm going to turn the camera off and we'll come back to it. Just giving a little progress report on the histogram. The time duration we can see happening right now we're at 196 seconds. The date 8th of January 2014. Let's turn it off. Okay, let's see how our experiment is going. We're at uh, we just passed 700 seconds of the experiment. We're looking at a wide time wi window. Let's see if this makes sense. We're looking at 700 nanosecond, 0.7 microseconds of a window. Let's see if that makes sense. Trace C, 0.1 microsecond. 100, 200, 300, 400, 5, 6, 700 nanoseconds. That makes sense. So here we could see there's plenty of opportunity for out of time pulses to happen in the wings of this histogram. We get this peak of coincidences, which should not happen by quantum mechanics. It's going to both detectors. The pulses are full height because we've trapped for that and we could see them on the oscilloscope. We can see that the pulses are all well behaved except for just a few which are insignificant. So I'm going to stop the experiment we're going to take a reading of how many are in this window. Well, the easy way to do it is just to count how many are within the cursor lines, which will give us 821 in 604 seconds. I could narrow this window a little bit to make the uh, degree above chance better, but let's just use what we have here. So again, this is the LaCroix Smart Trigger System. We're going to trigger on channel 3 after channel 4 goes above a trigger level within 0.7 microseconds. Let's look at the singles rates. Okay, I'm going to take a singles rate. I'm going to reset both of those counter timers the counter and the timer. And at 20 seconds, I'm going to stop. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have 105114. Let's do the other channel. Reset at the same time, we'll do 20 seconds.
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1184 in 20 seconds. Those are the singles rates of that was channel 2. We did the singles rates of channel 1 and 2. And from the singles rates and the time window, which is between the cursor lines, which is 200 nanoseconds, we can calculate chance. To do a good calculation of the unquantum effect, we need to take the source away and do a background rate To do the background rate, I'll clear the sweeps without the source, and we'll see if we get any pulses that come in from gamma rays, from cosmic rays. Ah, that's a gamma ray pair that came from outer space. Okay, revisiting the background test, we have 57 in 3,362 seconds.